Hi everyone, my name is David and I've just put the finishing touches on my kitchen sink template in Cubase and I'm gonna show you what I did to make it happen. So let's do it. Okay, here in America, we say kitchen sink, like everything but the kitchen sink. And that means a template that encompasses everything that you would need to use conceivably on a regular basis. And so it's really, I've combined four templates into one and let's uh, let's check the loading time on the kitchen sink template. So I'll just set it up and it's asked me for a folder. We'll start the clock, we'll hit okay. And here we go. How long will my kitchen sink template take to load? There it is, about 10 seconds. And here we go. Uh, there's a piano. And there's Scratch Audio loaded, so I can just say, I'm recording a song with a little bit of piano. And so right off the bat, I'm recording a song with a little bit of piano. Uh, you can record ideas right when you open up the project. But you might say, well, how does that make that a kitchen sink template? And I will tell you these, they're just scratch recording things. When you get in, you can automatically do stuff. And if I compose something on guitar, it'll typically be acoustic guitar and I'll record it into the mic just to get the idea down. But there's much more going on here. There's 157 tracks total. So I think in order to do this properly, we'll start from the end and go to the beginning if that makes any sense. So what I do, and this is a Cubase Pro tutorial because I don't think you get this functionality in Elements, is I use visibility. So we'll kill the piano and scratch audio and we'll start with the main buses. These are the basically four templates in one that I use. There's orchestral, there's band, which is like uh, rock and roll music, guitars, basses, keys, drums. There's electronic, which is EDM and hip hop. There's world, which is just a bunch of random sounds and world instruments. And then finally there's the mix bus and we can see that reflected on the mixer here if we look at our main buses. So all four of these, they route into the mix bus and the mix bus routes into stereo out. And if you notice the orchestral, that can be the mix bus if I'm just recording in the orchestral template. So I can kill everything but that and we'll show you what's in the orchestral template. So we'll roll this up. Now we have the orchestral template. Here's our orchestral buses. There's strings, brass, woodwind, percussion, and uh, piano and harp. But if you look, you just have the buses. You don't have the tracks. And that's because I've used a technique where you disable the tracks, which is available in Cubase Pro and Cubase Elements and everything. And I've mapped that to Alt-D. So here's a spiccato round robin violin. Here's a long violas. Here's a solo violin. I think it might be a legato patch, so it's a little bit longer to load. And you can map that to Alt D or whatever you want in the key commands. Disable, enable track, it's under the audio menu just for reference. So the reason why the template loads in 10 seconds is because these instruments aren't loaded. And then they're also not loaded into memory and they're not chewing up processor cycles. But if you need to use them, they're available. All you have to do is hit Alt D and then they work. We can show you that with the brass. Let's just load up the French horns and the low brass. And they're ready. So here's the French horns. And here's the low brass. And as I said earlier, you know, the brass will automatically map to the brass bus. And here's the orchestral bus where the brass bus maps to. So if you'll notice, these will be the ones that have sound coming when I play my pretty cool, huh? And it's all automatic because it was set up in the template. So we can disable these with Alt D and I think that's enough. We'll move on to my band stuff. So we'll 
hide that, we'll unhide the band stuff. And we'll hide this and we'll unhide the band stuff. And you notice there's a lot more tracks because I don't have my audio tracks disabled by default. So if we open up the band stuff, we have five buses. One, two, three, four, five, six. I can count six buses. Drums, guitars, bass, keys, horns and strings, and vox. Now I just do guitars, bass, and vocals in audio. So that's what comes up. But here's the cool thing. I record electric guitars direct in, and then if I wanna run them through an amp, I'll just reamp them. So uh, that goes into the right input on my interface. Well, it's already mapped to the right input. I can't tell you how many times I've tried to monitor a guitar track and uh, I hit this monitor button and all hell breaks loose with feedback because it's routed to the wrong input. It's routed to my microphone. And so with the speakers in the room, it's just, it's gnarly. So the cool thing about this is that I now, I'll never make that mistake again. And you notice it's also uh, routed to the right for bass, which I also record direct in and rarely ever reamp because you can do enough bass processing in the box these days to make it sound like an amp. Now acoustics will always be recorded in the air. I would never record an acoustic direct in. I'd record it with a microphone. So as you can see, those are routed to the left in where the microphone lives. And this is probably a good time to talk about effects sends. So we'll just kill this. We'll kill this. Uh, we don't really need this. I suppose. With the vocals, I like to use a reverb bus. So here are my effects channels. There's a room reverb, an algorithmic reverb, a delay, and then just a random FX box with multi effects processor. So we can load up a patch here of whatever we want, you know, church, Hamburg Cathedral, 2.2 seconds. And we'll make it all wet because that's what you do. Now we'll go to lead vocals. We'll roll that up. It's right here and we can record. This is the lead vocal. All right. <laughs> well, I uh, have that. We'll loop it and we'll go to the front of it. And if you notice in my sends, it's already set up. So this is the lead vocal. This is the lead this is the lead vocal. Pretty cool, huh? So all these sends are all ready to be used at any point in time. And that's what a template is about. It's about saving you from having to, you know, do a click fest that uh, sort of gets you out of your groove or makes you not feel what you're doing. And so that's the band buses. We'll move on to electric. So I'll kill that here. I'll kill that here. This is electric and you just see the buses, the group channels. And we'll put that here. We'll open it up. It's exactly the same. E drum, synth, E bass, E vox. And the way that I do this is I have these drums loaded up. And this is like an old school hip hop drum kit. Uh, it's just Groove Agent, but they they all do something a bit different. This is Polyplex. It'll have a different sound. Cool, huh? And uh, it's the same with synths. I have one of each synth loaded up. So here's Monarch. It's loaded up. But if I wanted a different patch or I wanted to use this and another patch, I could always just duplicate the track and then Monarch will be loaded up in the duplicate and I could just choose a different <laughs> patch for that. So it makes it very, very easy to have all this stuff in there. And if I'm not using this stuff, I can just kill it uh, in the project. And it's the same for E-Bass, E-Vocals, E-Backups. And finally, let's end with uh, the world bus, which follows the same exact principle. And I just wanted to play this instrument here. This is in the East West Gypsy Library. 
And this one, it sort of changed my opinion on sample libraries. See, I have classical guitars and I play the classical guitar, but this sounds different than when I play it because it's on a keyboard. So it sounds like this. Cool, huh? And that's, you know, using libraries like this made me realize that, you know, sample libraries, they're not better or worse. They're just different. They're different than how you would play it, how you would record it in the room. And they offer you more tools to your arsenal. But this has been my whirlwind tour of my kitchen sink template. I hope that it may give you guys some ideas on how to set up your project so that you can work fastly, work efficiently, get the technology out of the way and get down to making music. Cause that's my goal with these tutorials. So if you liked it, feel free to like or subscribe and take care everyone. Bye.